everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Off and On Stage. Um, tonight, Tom Chapman and I have the pleasure of having Joe Kellogg as our guest. Um, and this is the off stage part. So we're going to interview Joe, get up close and personal, like that. <laughs> Do you mind being interviewed like this? No, no. Uh. <laughs> um, and then we're going to, you know, have Joe play a couple of songs. I was going to ask you where you where you come from, where, from which planet? Yeah, which planet? Did you uh, <laughs> <laughs> the planet X. Is it in this universe? Uh, or a galaxy? Uh, uh, you from Colorado? <laughs> <laughs> I have lived in Colorado since 1964. Uh, I grew up in Pacific Palisades, California, which is uh, a suburb of Los Angeles. Okay. Lived there till I was 16. Wow. What brought you? To Colorado? Um, my father got work in Boulder at NCAR, National Center for Atmospheric Research. He's one of the directors at NCAR for a lot of years. You know, he was a, wow. a weather scientist, you know, big mucky muck in the world of meteorology. So, uh -huh. so that was a career move for him, and I was 16, not quite old enough to live where I wanted to, so I was. Uh, yeah. I was. Uh, <clears throat> Kidnapped Colorado, you know, against my will, you know. So. Uh, Are you glad you ended up here, though? No, I am. All places. I, I could have done a lot worse, a lot worse. Yes. But at the time, you know, I was a surfer and I loved. Yeah, you know, my friends and missed my senior year of high school with my friends, which was kind of a drag. But, you know, it's uh, it was character building, I guess you might yeah. say. Hmm. So, uh, anyway. When did you get the Kellogg Ranch? The Kellogg Ranch, I think that was about 1967, 66, 67 or so. And uh, my folks got an, a really great deal. They, uh, there's an old rancher there, an old bachelor rancher, lived on this 2,400 acre ranch near Nederland. And like a second or third generation, you know, ranchers up in the oh. mountains <laughs> lived there since like the 1870s or something, that oh. family. And uh, ran cattle up there and finally decided in the 60s, you know, like he was working too hard and some city slicker offered him like $125 an acre. And he went, damn, uh, better take that before he changes his mind. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, and that the realtor wow. then turned around and That's worth it. what? <laughs> God, I don't know. But, but the, the, my folks then bought a part of it for like 400 an acre. Uh -huh. you know, so they, nice. but. Uh, and when they saw it, they just fell in love with it. They said, like, God, we got to mortgage the house. we got to do whatever we can to yeah. get this. So they got, like, 187 acres of, of gorgeous mountain land. Yeah, it's beautiful up there. So. so it's up by Netherland? Mm-hmm. Is it by Caribou Ranch? Well, uh, we're a little south of Netherland. Caribou is about the same distance north. We're, like, three together. Yeah, they're, like, the old, kind of, kind of the opposite side, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Caribou Ranch is, like, six or eight miles from the ranch, probably. Did you go there at all, or did uh, you know Curcio? You know, I I went to the uh, the studio there, the Caribou Studio, uh, when it had just been built. You know, uh, oh. my fr hippie friends and I knew somebody that worked there. One of my friends had helped build it. You know, so we got to go yeah. in there and oh. and, and just yeah. you know, inside the place, and so yeah. I saw it, but yeah. I never recorded there, of course. Uh -huh. but, uh, and uh, I guess it burned down. At it's yeah. even there anymore. But yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, so maybe they rebuilt it. They had a little fire, but oh, yeah, so. they rebuilt. Mm -hmm. They've been still recording there, actually. But no, I didn't know. The, the, it's for sale now, though. Yeah, well, you know, for... <laughs> Would you like to go in with us to buy it? It's only $40 million, though. $40 million. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we think that we can talk them down to $20 million. <laughs> 20 million. So, yeah. Are you in, Joe? Come on. <laughs> Count me in, okay. <laughs> yeah. If you'll like carry back, you know, like 39.9 .9 million or something. You know? yeah. yeah, really. <laughs> wow. um, so, where you were telling us before that you have been able to put out one CD a year. That's a lot. Yeah. So, well, where do you great. record? I record. Yeah. Yeah, in Southern Colorado, um, and let's put it this way, I have mastered one CD per year, but I, 
I've only like you know gotten two of them kind of out in terms of like getting a cover design and stuff like that. But I have, I have uh, uh, two. They're all mastered, ready to go. I just I realized you know when after the first and second CD, you know that they weren't that I they weren't gonna just fly off the shelves. You know it's like. You know, I, I went to open mics with my first CDs thinking, wow, you know, which I charge 15, 18, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's like nobody buys them. You know, I couldn't give them away. So that's, well, that's what I did. I, I, they're basically calling cards at this point. Mm -hmm. there, there's so much free music out there. You know, it's, it's like, like having people go through a, a big buffet and then say, oh, but we'll charge you now for the dessert. And it's like people go, ah, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I think I've made tens of dollars with my CDs, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know, on a rare occasion, somebody will ask for me for a CD. I made the mistake. I played at Swallow Hill uh, at the Best of Open Mic once uh -huh. there, yeah. and people were asking me for my CD, and I, I, I was like, I didn't even think yeah, people have. were going to be like asking for my CDs. Yeah, I guess there are places where people will actually <laughs> we'll buy them. We'll buy them. We'll buy them. Not because <laughs> my, my skin flint friends, you know, mostly are also <laughs> musicians, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but but I've traded a lot. I will admit, I, you know, for other people that have CDs, you know, it's it's kind of like mm -hmm. you can trade a CD with somebody else. Yeah. So anyway, I, you know, when, when Destiny calls, you know, when my when my first song goes viral, I will have ready some mastered CDs. Have you done videos? That all? Uh, if you uh, attempt, uh, actually, if you go to if you if you uh, do a search for Joe Kellogg on YouTube. There are a couple of things that you'll you'll find. I have one okay. of me singing the perfect ten at the um, at uh, the um, song school oh. in Lyons, uh -huh. and I got a lot of laughs. About two hundred people in the audience there, and there was one girl that just 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 busting her gut laughing through the whole thing there, you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And you can hear somebody laughing there. It's actually, yeah. anyway, so yeah, you can hear, hear, you can see that, the little video of that that's there. That, um, yeah. I love that song. <laughs> Do you, will you we, play we for play us more? today? Of course, okay. anything you want. Okay. You okay. Sure. Do you want me to play it now? Are you yeah. ready? <laughs> I think, well, I'll, I'll try, I haven't, I haven't practiced it, so. Last night was rough, my wife and I, we had a major fight. We went to bed mad as hell, as I turned out the light. And as I drifted off to sleep, I fell into a dream. I dreamed that I was single and back on the dating scene. I thought, wow, this is cool. To be free again, I'll just use my smoothest moves and find me a perfect ten. It didn't take me long to meet the beautiful Ellen. She was French and gorgeous and surrounded by rich men. But when I tried to work my charm, no work could I get in. I thought it best to reassess my goal plan. But in no time I met the fine and fetching Caroline. She had some lines around her eyes but was otherwise divine. And I thought I'd keep an open mind. A nine would still be fine. But when I asked her for a date, she couldn't find the time. But it was fate I met an eight. She said her name was Kate. She had a funny high-pitched laugh. Her nose was not quite straight, but she had a perfect body. And I said, I'll take this eight. One more time, I had no luck to get her on a date. That's when I met Tevin. Her face was made in heaven. If she hadn't been so heavy, she'd have been more than a seven. But one more time, it was no dice. I could not break the ice. For her true love was chocolate cake and ice cream <laughs> on her pie. I changed my game plan one more time to find a perfect six. That's when I met Susan. She was into kinky sex. She brought out all her whips and chains and told me, get undressed. 
But all she did was beat me up and take off with my pants. <laughs> That's when I decided what I needed was a five. I didn't care if she was plain as long as she was just alive. <laughs> That's when I met Yvette, sloppy drunk in some old dive. But when I asked her for a date, she chased me with a knife. So down to four I met Lenore, she was a perfect bore. <laughs> when I tried to score with her, she threw me out the door. Desperately I wooed Marie, she was about a three. I should have known from her goatee, she was a flaming he. <laughs> As panic grew, I wooed it to the crazy Mary Lou. Her face looked like a screaming skull from a Hell's Angels tattoo. I, I wouldn't say she was a dog, she was more like dog food. <laughs> but she started looking better when I was drunk at half past two. <laughs> But when I asked her to be mine, she let out a scream. She said, listen, Joe, listen good, not even in your dreams. She said that she would never, ever take a man like me. She was holding out for a guy at least a three. That's when I finally found my one true perfect one. She was good at playing bridge. She really was quite fun. She told me lovely stories of the days when I was young, she was young. No sooner did I meet her when she passed at 91. <laughs> I cried to the winds, won't someone take the zero? All I ever really wanted was to be some sweet girl's hero. That's when I opened up my eyes, my dog had licked my face. She had to do her business. She wanted me to play. I gazed at my sleeping wife and I began to grin. I looked at her silver hair and the dimple in her chin and I whispered to her softly, you're still my perfect ten. I just hope that I never have to play the field again. Every man should hear that song <laughs> and be reminded that it, you know, yeah. you're not 21 anymore. That's right. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. You might be looking for a perfect 10, but look in the mirror, yeah. you might not be a, yeah. a match, you know. Or you yeah. have the perfect 10 already. Maybe I so. Like you that. know, you have to. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that was nice resolution. That was great. You have a lot of songs that are kind of humorous. Right. Yeah, well, I try to be, of course, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. That's his trademark. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Is it? But you also um, write kind of more serious songs. Yeah, yeah, you want, you like, yeah, seriously. No, we don't want depressing songs today, <laughs> but. Sad, well. <laughs> no, we don't want that. Sad, well, what do you, uh, but, uh, but, okay, well, you want semi-in-between, sort of light-hearted? Yeah. Um, no, I think you should do whatever you want. Yeah, you do whatever you want. But <laughs> where do you even get, if they're sad, I like sad yeah, songs. You do? Yeah. Where do you get the inspiration for your funny songs? Where do I get them? Well, um, you want the flippant answer or the. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's from your dog. You have a lot of songs with your dog in it. Well, I have a. You know, I have a, a, yeah, I have a few, one or two, yeah. Um, well, you know, like my. my, my my flippant answer is like, a, uh, I get my inspirations from pot and NyQuil, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you can say that now because it's legal. Yeah, NyQuil know. is legal That's now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it comes from a life of just, I don't know, just beating around the bush, I guess. But uh, yeah. Did the comedy workshop, I know you took that, right? Oh, yeah. Christina's. I, I got the low fracker idea yeah. out of that. Did that help you? or? It did, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it, Are you going um, to become a stand-up? Or, <laughs> uh, or just work it in? You've already worked it into your, it's part of your act. Well, you know, there are similarities between songwriting and stand-up. Yeah, You know, sure. both of them are a craft where you try to choose absolutely precisely the words that you're going to say. I mean, either even the rhythm and the timing 
of stand up. Yeah. You know, it's like it's so honed. Yeah, it's almost you know? like a song. And yeah, and it's memorized. And like you know, the comedians, you know, most of them, like I mean, they can recite word for word. I sometimes I buy the CD. I go to like you know a comedy nightclub and I'll yeah. buy their CD, and it's the mm -hmm. same thing they they said. It's like it's it memorized yeah. it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I recently though took a, a, a an improv workshop, which is a totally different kind of comedy, mm -hmm. where it's like you have to like. S work with an idea that you don't know what's going to be and uh, you know come yeah. up with something yeah. but there again there's there's techniques and tricks it sounds like like wow how, how do you do that you know how do you yeah. come up with goofy stuff but yeah. you know with that too there's also techniques you know and uh, the more you do it you know the more i guess tools and and ideas you have to to kind of work with but but yeah, comedy and, and songwriting have a lot lot in common yeah. as as Definitely. poetry and songwriting. You know, mm -hmm. and I I just find that that everybody's got songs about their their broken heart, you know, and you know their breakup and their tormented soul. And you know, I would rather like do something that's a little more fun and to to listen to sometimes. You know? Did you start writing when you were young or? Yeah, I, I you know I think like my first little Maybe. attempts at songs were like when I was a teenager when I yeah. was first writing. But you know, of course, yeah, nothing came out of that enduring. But yeah, yeah I, I think I really enjoyed. I really thought it was really cool the idea of coming up with an idea and put music to it and having it somehow immortalized. You know, mm -hmm. so. But uh, we all, all you know, most songwriters, you know, have a, have a Dylan complex. You know, they, yeah, they want to be Bob Dylan. You know, they want to <laughs> yeah. be the the prophet slash spokesman for a generation here, uh -huh. but, uh, but uh, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Is that what you want to do? Is that your goal with your music? To be Bob Dylan? Well, well I, I, I think he's kind of like, you know, the uh, the bar of like, yeah. you know, no one, I don't think anyone has raised it. Well, there's a few people. No, he's, I wouldn't say no one is as good as him. I think the Beatles in their own way, I think James Taylor in his own way is just as good in in their own way, uh -huh. but in terms of deep lyrics, I would say like he's the best lyricist, or the most interesting lyricist. I mean, the James Taylor and Beals they make great lyrics, but but uh -huh. there's more depth to Bob Dylan, uh -huh. which allows him to be not as good a singer, exactly, yeah. and, you know, not as good a musician or produce stuff. It's just like his songs yeah. are so strong that they almost have a life of their own. So, uh, you know, so many people cover, you know, Blown in the Wind or something like that. I mean, that song is, will, you know, yeah, will allow it is, it's, a, you know, it's a classic. Yeah, it's a timeless song. It's like a timeless kind of song, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, I hope um, Bob's not watching this video because then he'll go, What? <laughs> I'm not a good singer? <laughs> what a way to find out. <laughs> well, I know that could be blasphemy. He didn't set the bar for the writers. <laughs> well, don't take it personally, yeah. but your singing sucks. You know? <laughs> I still love you, man. <laughs> He's got his own style. Matter. I actually like his voice now. <laughs> it's like, I'm a millionaire. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, now you have a new thing that you're doing, right? At the Oriental Theater. Well, tell us about that. Okay, very good. Um, well, the or the Oriental Opry is it happens at this point every second Tuesday, uh, and it's sort of a variety show. Uh, the Oriental Opry is like an old movie theater, and uh, you know it's a big it's it's a, it's a pretty big venue. You know, like Johnny Winter and uh, Tim O'Brien, and you know I. I Leon Russell. Leon Russell, you know, some yeah. pretty big names, you know, mm -hmm. play there. And my, our friend Gene Manley has uh, uh, been, uh, re been uh, cre you know, organizing the show, which mm -hmm. uh, involves uh, local talent, and uh, she's really good at networking with local people and, and putting together these shows. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a, you know, Cheap Thrills Showcase. That's what I kind of think, the Oriental Opry, Opry Cheap Thrills Showcase. So she asked me to be the MC of it last time, and and so uh, I, you know, I, I guess maybe people thought that you know I needed someone there to kind of introduce the acts and everything like that. So mm -hmm. she asked me to do it, and I got to do it, and it was really fun. I sort of introduced myself as the the singing MC, and I cool. 
I get to play with other people, and some of the musicians are just really good. I could just play a song, and they just start playing. You know, like they're that's a sign of a real musician. You know, yeah. they don't even know the song, and yet yeah. they just hear it, and they just start playing with you. You know, yeah, so, Tom's like that. Yeah, he yeah. And also Moses Walker. Moses Walker. With you guys? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he's quite a character. He's, yeah, he is. Yeah, so uh, he's 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 kind of a, a lot of I don't know how to describe him, but he's a I think of him as kind of a, sort of a local version of Willie Nelson or something like that. You know, he's a, you know slash Satchmo or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's neat. So where is the Oriental Theater? It's at Forty Fourth and Tennyson. It's in West Denver, you know. Uh, yeah. And it's very reasonable to get in, right? Five bucks. Five dollars, yeah. Okay. And it starts at 7.30. And, uh, yeah, it's a good show. It's a yeah. good show. I've gone to a couple, and it's pretty amazing who you guys get. It's really fun. It's fun. It, that's, that's, you know, you know, at least that's what we're trying to do. I mean, I, I have a blast there, and people do. And we want to get the numbers up. We want to, you know, make it kind of a... Yeah, you like an like an opera, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, like Grand Old Opry would be really cool yeah. if it became you know a tradition and an institution it. here. So uh, you know we're starting out, uh, you know, just starting out. We've only done it like four or five times, and uh, you know it's, uh, it's we're still doing it. And the the boss of uh, the Oriental Opry, Scott Durr, seems to be very happy. We're filling it on a night when. Yeah. Otherwise, it would there would yeah. be there, and uh, yeah. uh, it is weeknight, you know. So, you know, it's not uh, not a night everybody's out and about trying to have a good time and and go drinking. But but uh, but uh, it's a great start. I really like the reason you guys are doing it. You know, to promote local musicians. And, you know, that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah. Well, you know what's really interesting, you know. Um, is that there are lots of really talented people that come out of the woodwork, you know, that never were famous or, you know, they, they got their day job selling vacuum cleaners or or became PhDs in chemistry or engineers or, or plumbers or whatever. Yeah. But a lot of them, you know, like were had just as much potential as some of the people who eventually became, you know, the, the famous people. And uh, but uh, you know, reality you know dictates that you you got to get a day job. You got to put food on the table. But a lot of people kept the dream alive and are really talented. And uh, now there's just there's so much of that out in the Denver area. The open mic mm -hmm. phenomena is really interesting. I go to several of them, and the talent of some of these open mics is just really amazing. I mean, I, and the variety, because, you know, people come in, they'll do their 15 or 20 minute set, and then somebody else, and it just keeps coming and coming. And it's very little stress for people who want to play, because, like, you can show up or you don't show up, you know? And if you got some songs you want to try, you try them out. And it becomes a real nice community of, of musicians and people who, who appreciate, uh, you know, the local, the local musicians. So... I just think it's just a, a really interesting thing that the baby, mainly, mainly baby boomers. You know, at least I see a lot of baby boomers who are doing that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. they, you know back in the '60s yeah, and whatever. You know, when we were coming of age and being influenced by the Beatles and James Taylor and Dylan and all these people. You know, and who had maybe had rock and roll fantasies. You know, and sure. uh, you know that was Plan A for me. You know, I was going to yeah. be a rock and roll star, right? Yeah. You know, but, uh, I was going to have groupies in the mansion, and I was going to throw TV sets off the balconies of hotels, right? And, yeah. You know, but because uh, I could, right? Uh, know, but, sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, that didn't quite uh, pan out yet, so. Yeah. Still waiting, you know. Yeah, Never. Not yet. <laughs> it happened. Yeah, it well, yeah. happened. Think positive. Well, when I retire, my, my goal is to open for the Rolling Stones. Right. Oh. <laughs> yes, and I won't be a glory yeah, hog. They can have the top billing. Yeah. That's nice of them. Yeah, that's a good goal. Um, <laughs> How about another song? Yeah. Okay. Whatever you, uh, whatever you want. Anything I want. Jeez. Um, hmm. well, all right. Well, I'm gonna change it uh, to to a more. Let's see. You 
can edit out the my little my my false starts here. Sure. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is this is a song I I um, revived that I wrote in like 1989 after the breakup with with a, a gal that I was in love with uh, in Arizona, and I had recorded it on a cassette and it it was gathering dust and I finally found the only copy in existence but a couple of years ago and uh, got it digitized and stuff and then I recently recorded it. I have actually a really great recording if you wanted to like s splice in the recording. It'd be better than what I would do right now but if you want to hear live. Oh, we want to hear live. <laughs> okay, right. But uh, you know this is, you know I think you know I mean are you Songwriting, sometimes you make up stuff, but sometimes it's based on something really, you know, that really heartfelt and real in your life. And this is a very real, real kind of uh, song, you know. So I wrote this to try to get her back, you know. Right. It's my last desperate, desperate Did it work? No. <laughs> but I got a song. But you got a nice song. Yeah. You know, I sometimes jokingly say, you know, it's, it's the, the job of songwriters to to screw up their life and then write about it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway. So I so. uh, one more time. You used to call my house your shelter from the storm And I'd say you made my place a pleasure dome Every time you walk inside my door, be greeted with a kiss so deep and warm. At night we'd light a candle and share a glass of wine and fall into each other's arms so tenderly. It was good what we had going, it was sweet, it was growing, but now it's just a fading memory. Guess I'll never really understand why you went and threw it all away. The sweet love that we shared was beautiful and rare. Did you think that you could find that kind of love just any day? And I guess I'll never really understand. Why love so good can go so far astray You can't explain it to your will For all the good you'll do I'll never really understand Why you threw it all away We both Worked and played together in our daily lives. We were busy, but we took the time to spend. But when the evening came, we left our cares behind. We were lovers, we were allies, we were friends. I can still recall that weekend in the fall. We walked along that clear mountain stream It was all so real the way we made each other feel But now it only feels like a dream And I guess I'll never really understand Why you went and threw it all away The sweet love that we shared was beautiful and rare Did you think that you could find that kind of love Just any day and I guess I'll never really understand Why love so good can go so far astray You can't explain it to your heart For all the good you'll do I'll never really understand Why you threw it
I knew she would be. It's a what, Joe? He knew I would be. I know, I quite love it. That's beautiful. That's good. I can't believe she wouldn't come back with you after that song. I can't believe it either, you know what? Her loss. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so you talked about playing at open mics. Do you ever play gigs where you get paid or? Uh, you know, uh, have I? <laughs> or is that not important to you? Well, I'll, I'll just say it's, okay, we'll just say it's not important to you. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have played at gigs, yeah, you know, maybe about, you know, a couple times a year, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, you know, for drinks and stuff like that, you know, I just... I haven't gotten a lot of paying gigs here. Um, I hear they exist, but I mean, there's so many people that play. It's like oh, it's like you have to yeah. pay practically for the privilege of playing anymore. You know? I know. Denver is yeah. saturated with good musicians. Yeah, there is a lot of musicians out there. Yeah, that seems to be the case here. It's Ken and mine. In fact, I you know, was, uh, yeah. last Saturday, I had a gig planned with my good friend Bob Vega, a great musician. And uh, well, we briefly met, I believe, at the, uh, at the Oriental. And we had like a set um, planned out, and we and he was playing keyboards with that song and some other stuff. But he also is a great karaoke meister. And so uh, we had a few technical difficulties with uh, you know with, with getting set up. So we just started with the karaoke. And people were just so into it, and they've never had karaoke at the Cannon Mine, and it's just like we just, we just do it, did karaoke till they threw us out, and it was just so much fun, you know. And I, you know, it's like so we just got up there and sang. It was, it wasn't so much a gig as a gig as it was a party where yeah. they just let us use the, the Cannon Mine to, to to do that. But I've done I've done several uh, gigs at, uh, and I've organized like some songwriter showcases. At the Cannon Mine, so uh, it's a nice, very nice venue. Yeah, that was off yet. On South Pop Public Road, there. Uh, yeah, well, I should plug that. And Wednesday nights, uh, they have our, it's the best show in town. You know, uh, it's just an open mic, but some really, really good people will come out yeah, of the woodwork. It's a nice room. Uh, so now, where is that located? At? It's on South Public Road, which is kind of the old town uh, Lafayette Main Street. Oh, okay. And uh, it's. Just the Cannon Mine Cafe, I guess, just map quest it or Google it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Cannon Mine Cafe, you know, you don't have to yeah. give the address anymore, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's, it's a nice little venue there. Hmm. Since I started playing again, like, five years ago, I mean, I had I had not played for decades. I literally had not played, you know, picked up the car sometimes maybe once a year. Why? Why did you? Because I just lost... Uh, I just lost interest in it. I lost inspiration. Huh. I used to play a lot when I was young, and I guess I just burned out, and okay. and I just wasn't around other people to keep the interest going. Now I'm around so much good energy, you know, and, and you guys included. You know, I mean, it's just like when you're around people who make beautiful music, and you're just so moved by music, it makes you wanna wanna do it too. Yeah. It makes you wanna just play. That's you know? true. And and when people seem to appreciate your music, you know that's that that is the you know I guess the juice that you know the uh, the, the sustenance yeah. you know that that musicians crave you know it's, mm -hmm. so right. it's like the the vampire blood of musicians is just adulation and appreciation. You know? yeah. So when did you start doing your festival up there at the ranch? Oh, uh, about four years ago we did the first one and it was kind of a fluke. We just Put a little open, you know, a little microphone out there and some speakers, and it was just a party. And mm -hmm. it, it was we've always had a party up there like once a year, but we never did it as a music thing. Uh -huh. And one year we just put out the, you know, a little open mic, just goofing around, and people yeah. are going, "Oh, that sounds pretty good," you know. Yeah. And a bunch of my friends, that I, new friends from from some of my songwriting circles, came up, and we and I videoed it, and people went, "Man, that was so fun." And uh, so we then planned it out for the next year, and then we had a big, you know, big, big showing for oh, that. Wow. And so we've done uh, like four of them now, and we'll do another one yeah, nice. uh, around solstice time, June, June twenty-first ish. Yeah, yeah. You know, though, uh, though I found that everybody's doing parties I to, on, on. I had to miss your one last summer, but um, the summer before. Yeah, yeah, that was really first, fun. That's when I met you. I guess. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> You have a real philosophical song about 
Well, it's sort of religious. But oh, will the real God? I, mean. I probably do. Probably the will the real God please stand up? Yeah, oh, that's the one. Oh yeah. Okay. I'd like, I'd like oh, to hear yeah. that. You <laughs> bet. That's it. Some people here on earth take the point of view. Only they are blessed by God, the rest of us are screwed. Some people think that they and they alone know the truth. They call these righteous people Christian Muslims and Jews. Call these righteous people Christian. call me sinner, Muslims call me infidel, the Jews they call me Gentile, they all say I'm going to hell, which God should I believe, the contradictions don't add up, is it Allah, Jehovah, or Jesus, will the real God please stand up, is it Allah, Jehovah, or Jesus, will the real God please stand up. met a Christian preacher who says I'm going to hell. If I don't get baptized and learn the Bible well, I must believe in talking snakes. Evolution is a lie, and if I dare to question it, my soul in hell will fry. If I dare to question it, my soul in hell will I am not an atheist, but I think it's a fraud for anyone to claim that they alone can speak for God. I know there are good Christians, but this guy was quite rude. He says I'm going to hell. Well, he can go there too. Preacher says I'm going Muslim Allah, who says I'll be beheaded if I speak the name of Allah or draw pictures of Muhammad. But if I blow myself up and kill some Jews, I'll be rewarded with seventy virgins if to Islam I am martyr. I'll get seventy virgins if to Islam I am martyr. But what good will those virgins do? I'm just a ghost. My body parts are scattered and my weenie burnt to toast. <laughs> I know there are good Muslims, but this guy was a thug masquerading as a holy man. He can't kiss my butt. He makes a great religion look like a sad joke. I met a Jewish rabbi a long black coat who said that God loves Jews the most this truth the Torah spoke there's nothing wrong with stealing land it's all part of God's plan and we're justified to have the bomb it's okay in our hand Israel's got the right to have the bomb now let's go bomb our land now I know there are good Jews they've all been through a lot they should be the first to raise their voice against these nuts. Religion's never an excuse to drag us into war. And rabbis like the one I met, well, he can kiss my wall. Rabbi like the one I met, well, he can kiss my wall. That's a, re that's a reference to the Wailing Wall. Yeah. For you Jewish lawyers whom I ask for defamation, let me state that I think Israel has a right to be a nation. The Holocaust was true, and I too hate for defamation, but I don't excuse religious fools that threaten Armageddon. Christian, Muslims, and Jews killing won't get you dead. There are some people here. They are blessed by God, the rest of us are screwed. Which God should I believe? The contradictions don't add up. Is 
in college, oh Lord Jesus, will the real God be standing? Is it Allah, your Lord Jesus, or is it Donald Duck? Now some of you are wondering, what about the Buddhists? Aren't I going to try to make them sound just as ludicrous? Well, Buddha, don't you think you've escaped my ranting necks? Don't you get too smug, I'm coming for you next. Buddha, don't get smug, I'm coming for you next. Yeah. <laughs> so do you ever get backlash from people about songs like that? You know, when you say words like greeny. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, some of your songs are could be controversial, depends on how you. Well, it. I think I That's think cool. uh, the people I hang out with, you know, kind of have the same warped sense of humor. You know, obviously, if I were to like play that for some Christian gathering, yes, probably. Yeah, that might not go over too well. <laughs> yeah, you know, but for my heathen friends and you know, <laughs> pagans and heathens and. Secular rights, you know, yeah, you know, it, it, they, they kind of go, yeah. They cut, a lot of people think, you know, but they're going to stand back just in case the lighting bolt's going to, like, hit, you know, right yeah. where I'm standing, the, you know. But, uh, yeah. no, surprisingly little, you know, one, I've heard of, like, one or two people, and I've played that for hundreds and hundreds of people, you know. Maybe some people don't say it, but, I, you know, like, but I, I get a lot of people going, like, God, I love that song, and, you know, like, you know, I wouldn't have said that, but I that somebody had the guts to say that yeah, stuff, you know. And, it, and I've had discussions with preachers, in fact. You know, one of, the, one of the guys that goes to one of my open mics at the Mojo's, you know, is, is a, a Episcopal preacher. A very cool guy, you know, a, a kind of a hippie-turned preacher, but, you know, a very legitimate preacher. But he, he liked that song so much, and he used it as part of a sermon. And he totally got it. It's like some people get yeah. you and some people don't. Mm -hmm. And he got the idea that it's not about honest faith. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, about people yeah, using so religion to, to, yeah, that yeah. whole hypocrisy thing and manipulation of people, you know, for political mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's just, it's the abuse Putting of yourself religion. yourself above other people. Yeah, it's yeah. the whole abuse of religion, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Is there one subject that you will not touch? You won't write something about? <laughs> hmm. Um, I can't think of that. <laughs> no. Um, no. You'll go for anything, right? No limits. <laughs> no, but... Yeah. You know, uh, I thought that I, I crossed the line, but I, I've... You know, if you go to the YouTube, boy, you hear some things that are, like, way, way beyond what I do. But yeah. And they have, like, million hits, so, like, you know... I think today... There, you know, there's an understanding, not among everybody, but, you know, like, in comedy, in, in general, there are no limits. You know, it, it, as long as people laugh, it can be racist, it can be about sex, religion, pol politics, whatever. You know, if it's funny, it's acceptable. Don Rickles, for instance, can, can say the most outrageously racist thing, but the way he says it, yeah. you know he's just ribbing people, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and they just, you know, it's just pushing their buttons. You know, it's, it's all in the way that it's said, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, you know, I think it's important to, to be able to laugh at stuff. I mean, that's comedy. It diffuses, you know, otherwise, you know, hostile situations, you know, I mean, it's like, if you can laugh at stuff, you know, it's like, you know, I, it suddenly doesn't seem as serious as it previously did, so, I, you know, I think uh, that's the saving grace of comedy here. So, yeah. I love your songs, I, yeah. I think they're funny, but then they have like this poignant, I don't know. Deep meaning. Yeah, you always get us at the end, <laughs> that's what yeah. I love. Resolution, uh -huh. yeah. So keep, keep at it. All right, I'll, I'll do my two brains or something. You heard that one, maybe? Uh, well, I yeah. probably have, but do it. I remember. Please. Let's see if I can remember this one here. Let's go. This is, this was, uh, I was writing, wrote this in this group here. It was in Boulder, and it was very, you know, the very, you know, 
a very Birkenstock kind of, you know, a Birkenstock uh, slash feminist kind of, very slash Boulder slash you know People's Republic kind of a kind of a gathering here and everything. But they were talking about everything being right brain and left brain and chakras and things like that. So I just uh, I don't. I, this is what I came up with here. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, my two brains. B, I'm so sorry if I've been acting strange. But there's something you should know about my two brains. My right brain is intuitive, outgoing, and artistic. My left brain is logical, analytic, and scientific. My right brain likes to party, country music, and to drink. My left brain likes to stay at home, read a book, and think. My right brain is the dreamer, the lover, and the skydiver. My left brain is the worrier and designated driver. My right brain is the seeker, wanderlust, and thrill. My left brain is the worker who stays home and pays the bills. My right brain dreams of true love and romantic destiny. My left brain thinks that love is just hormones and chemistry. But there is one thing both my brains agree. Girl, you're the best thing ever happened to me. Roses are red. I love you, girl, and I love you too. My right brain is a jock, my left brain is a geek. My right brain goes for carbs, my left brain prefers meat. My right brain likes organic, my left brain goes for grease. My right brain thinks my left brain is a total freak. My right brain is Republican, my left brain Democrat. My right brain is very spiritual, my left brain thinks it's crap. My right brain likes to stay up late, my left brain needs his bed. My left brain thinks my right brain is a wacko bubble head. But there is one thing. Sometimes my right brain can be a little crass And I know you think my left brain Has no feelings and no class Both my brains say stupid things That make you blush and gas I know sometimes you think I've got Both brains stuck up my ass But you can get crazy too And make us run for cover Four days a month you get so nuts It feels like we're outnumbered But you're the only one Who puts up with both of me Thanks for understanding my inner rivalry And all in all there's one thing Both my brains agree Girl you're the best thing ever happened to me Roses are red Violets are blue, I love you girl, and I love you too, and my medulla oblongata. Like about uh, you know old guys and young females, 
Also, a product of a songwriting group where there was a rather up uptight woman there who didn't like the fact that this one other fellow was writing songs about younger females, you know, like with a sort of carnal in the oh, implication, yeah, yeah. shall we say. And I thought, well, what's wrong with that? I mean, isn't that what songs are all about? But uh, anyway, so I, so I came back to the to the with a song to kind of answer to sort of as a challenge to to you know see if I could. How close I could get to that line, you know, without crossing over, you know, that, uh, and uh, so. She greets me at the door with true love in her eyes. She misses me so much, she sometimes starts to cry. She'll lie on her back with her legs wide open. She loves when I caress her. She looks like a coyote. We don't know her. She's she's like a you know, a uh, pound dog, you know. But you know, when she was a little puppy, she would run, and I don't know. She she looks like she could be you know have some coyote or wolf in her somewhere. Yeah. There are dogs out there that are part coyote. Well, she's got the coloring of a wolf, you know, of a gray wolf. You know, she has the exact coloring. Uh -huh. You know, she looks a little more husky, but she has the coloring, and you know, it's just mm -hmm. and and. We have another dog. She's kind of she's not a big big dog, but she's a medium sized dog. And we have this big old big old fluffy big dog, you know. And and you know it's like my order, and she would just always like try to bite his neck, like she's pulling down some caribou or something, you know, or <laughs> you know like uh, just you know just 
just loves to grab his neck, you know, and pretend like she's bringing down some big game, you know, so. Well, we really appreciate you coming to do an interview with us. And is there anything you want our audience to hear? Or to hear. do you want to tell them anything? I would like, to like them to hear my next them? ten songs, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Where can they buy your CDs? Or how, how uh, well, at this point, you can go to joekelloggmusic.com. K-E-L-L-O-G-G. -G. Joe Kellogg Music. Are you related to Rice Krispies? Um, <laughs> they say, they, they say that all, all Kelloggs are, Kellogg's. in America are, are, are descended from That's three us. Kellogg brothers from the 1660s. Yeah. Wow. So, yes, so yes, I am. And, <laughs> that, and I plan to go back and get, you know, my uh, trust fund from the, from Battle Creek here. In this sure, yeah. Nice. <laughs> you were looking for me. <laughs> Maybe you could put your CD on the back of every cereal box. There you go. That would, oh, I was going to say, you know, uh, but as far as, far as, I don't have a CD baby kind of thing set up. Oh, right now, that. you can download them for free. You just go down there and download, download my songs. And, and and if they go viral, great. Then they'll, they'll uh, you know, be like Sugar Man, you know? It's like, the, who yeah. was that guy, you know? It's like, uh, yeah, he did he self-immobilize, you know? Yeah, it, it, he plans for viral. You gotta, yeah, you know, the, the, you know, plan. Uh, you know, that's right. The, the legend's got to like brew for 20 years, and then they find me in some rest home, you know, and I'm like, in diapers. You know, yeah. Uh, and then they'll make me uh, go yeah. to concerts and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> bring me back. You know. yeah. Well, be there. <laughs> well, is there anything else? No, I, but thank you so much. Yeah, this is an you. honor. You know, you guys are, are great. I mean, just I love our friendship, and and thank I'm just you. so thrilled to 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 you know an honor to be you know be on your show. Well, you know? we're honored to have you. Yeah, we're honored. Thank you for coming. Anytime, anytime. So great. For sure. Want to close it with one one little song? Sure. Let's see. Um, <laughs> sure. How about Love Fracker? You want Love Fracker? Oh yeah, that's your yeah. new song, yeah. right? Yeah, that's pretty. Good. When you think your heart is empty, you got nothing left to give. Your love has turned to anger and you just can't forgive. When the well goes dry, and you feel no love within. Your heart feels cold as stone. Well, that's where I fit in. There's still a lot of love trapped deep inside your heart. You just need some hot steam to get it to restart. I know you probably think I'm just some crazy old white cracker. The back where I come from, they call me the love fracker. Love fracker. I can steam a frozen heart and free the love trapped inside. Make a gusher from a well all the others thought was dry. It don't matter how bitter, disillusioned, or uptight. I've been known to make bull dykes cry my name out in the night. I'll crack your heart of stone. I'll put you in the moon. Your passion's gonna flow again like sweet Texas crew. You probably think I'm whack and I've been sniffing too much lacquer. But back where I come from, they call me the love wrecker. Love Fracker. I can make a mongoose make a love to a snake, make a black widow, show pity on her mate, make a sperm widow fall in love with a giant squid, make a Catholic nun wanna have a dozen kids. So, honey, don't you bite me, I'm not here to attack you. But you will could use some pumping, and I know how to frack ya. Trapped inside your heart is a naughty little hottie. Just playing hard to get, I'm not fooled by your karate. And I take it all with grace, and makes you spray my face. My family jewels will mend from that kick you just placed. I wouldn't make this up, I ain't some crazy old bull crapper. But back where I come from. They call me the Love Fracker. Love Fracker. A woman's like an oil well. A man is like a driller. That well will be a 
Dave Gusher. If you know how to thrill her, I know you probably think I'm just some crazy old white cracker. The back where I come from, they call me the love fracker.